We welcome you all to today's All Saints service. Let us pray. Happy are we when our treasures cannot be quantified. Happy are we when our knowledge is tempered by mystery. Happy are we when our pain is held in the palm of love. Happy are we when our delight comes from beyond ourselves. Amen. He went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hello. Today is All Saints Day and I've been thinking about what it might mean to be a saint. I wonder jokingly if I might apply for the role. It might be something to aspire to when I finally retire. First of all, how do you become a saint? I started looking into it and I quickly discovered things might not be as easy as I first thought. It's not just a case of being a good person of doing good. According to the Roman Catholic Church, the process is much more complicated. First of all, you need to be dead, not something I'm aspiring to. Then there has to be a five year gap to give time for grieving and to be free of emotions and attachments to enable a rational decision to be made. Following that, if you are to be canonised as a saint, you need to have completed at least one miracle in your life. Only then can the Pope proclaim you as a saint. There are a few exceptions to this strict process, but I don't think I'm going to be one of those exceptions. I'm beginning to think I might be better off trying to find some different retirement aspirations. Perhaps I'll take up golf. If you look up the list of saints over time, it makes interesting reading. There are, of course, all the saints we read of in the Bible, particularly those associated with Jesus. Throughout history, the list of saints is long, and I wondered what virtues they might have to have to make them classify as a saint. Some of them have amazing stories to tell. St Francis of Assisi and his love for nature. St Bernadette, who's said to have many miracles and visions of Christ. And then, of course, there's saints such as Columba, who sailed to the tiny Scottish island of Iona, and from his legacy, Celtic Christianity spread. So many marvellous stories to tell. And these people need to be recognised in our church. There are also a few odd stories of history, particularly when you go back a bit such as the story of St Margaret of Antioch, who angered her father so much by becoming a Christian that she was thrown into jail. And whilst there, she allegedly met the devil in the form of a dragon who swallowed her up whole. The cross she was carrying irritated the dragon's belly so much she was able to escape the dragon whole and alive. She's now known as the patron saint of childbirth. Wow. None of this sounds very Methodist. I was interested to understand more about what the Methodist theology of saints is. What should we, the Methodist people, have to think and believe about saints? From my research, I found that in the Articles of Faith of the Methodist people, John Wesley had very strong views. Worshipping and adoration, as well as images and relics, are also invocations of saints. It is a fond thing, vainly invented and grounded upon no warrant in the scriptures, but repugnant to the word of God, he said. That's pretty strong stuff, repugnant to the word of God. But then I looked further afield and found that All Saints Days was one of John Wesley's favourite days. He calls it a festival I truly love. On the same day in 1788, he writes in his diary, I always find this a comfortable day. The following year, he calls it a day that I peculiarly love. For Wesley, we should not worship or venerate saints. All of this worship should be safe for Christ himself. But he advises people not to ignore the saints altogether for they are examples of Christ-centred people. So essentially Wesley says, don't worship them, learn from them. The final process of becoming a saint within the Roman Catholic Church 
is called beatification or being made blessed. And this is where it all begins to make sense with our gospel reading today. We heard a list of what it means to be blessed, you know, the poor in spirit, those who mourn and so forth. And what, in my view, is really what sainthood is about. We've heard this so many different times. I'm offering a, a different version, a different rethink of this particular list of the Beatitudes. Have a listen and see what you think. Blessed are the poor, not the penniless, but those whose heart is free. Blessed are those who mourn, not those who whimper, but those who raise their voices. Blessed are the meek, not the soft, but those who are patient and tolerant. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, not those who whine, but those who struggle. Blessed are the merciful, not those who forget, but those who forgive. Blessed are the pure in heart, not those who act like angels, but those whose life is transparent. Blessed are the peacemakers, not those who shun conflict, but those who face it squarely. Blessed are those who are persecuted for justice, not because they suffer, but because they love. We have much to learn from the poor from those who mourn, from those who strive from justice. We have so much more to learn from all these people. But I'm still not sure what the link is between blessed and being blessed and being a saint. In the letter to the Romans, chapter 1, verse 7, Paul addresses his audience. This is who he's writing to. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints. And that's when it clicked with me. We are all called to be saints. If we are God's beloved, as, as Paul says, when we think about this, we are all called to be saints. When we think about All Saints Day, we are reconnecting, not with just those who are here on earth, but we're also joining with the great company of those who have gone to glory, is the phrase we often use. No wonder John Wesley called this a most comfortable day. So be blessed today and remember that you don't have to strive for this. You are already blessed in God's eyes. But more than this, we join with those who have gone before us singing, beautiful saviour, wonderful counsellor, clothed in majesty, lord of history, as we sang in our opening hymn. And there's one more thing. Charles Wesley, the great hymn writer and the brother of John Wesley, gives us a lovely image of the church through the ages. Come, let us join our friends above who have obtained the prize and on the eagle wings of love to joy's celestial rise. Let saints on earth unite to sing with those to glory gone for all the servants of our God and King in earth and heaven are one. All Saints Day is a time to remember those who have helped us on our journey as followers of Christ. Traditionally, it's a time to give thanks to those in the local church. But today, in a moment, in a reflection, you are invited to take time to think of those people and give thanks to God for those who have helped you and influenced you in your faith. So, let saints on earth unite to sing with those to glory gone and know that as we do so, we are truly comforted and truly blessed. To all the saints, Amen.
praise your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labours. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honour and glory. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us come together in prayer. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Keep us from being preoccupied with money and worldly goods and with trying to increase them at the expense of justice. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Help us not to be ruthless with one another and to eliminate the discord and violence that exists in the world around us. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let us not be impatient under our burdens and unconcerned about the burdens of others. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they shall be filled. Make us thirst for you, the fountain of all holiness, and actively spread your influence in our private lives and in society. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Grant that we may be quick to forgive and slow to condemn. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are the clean of heart, for they shall see God. Free us from our senses and our evil desires and fix our eyes on you. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Aid us to make peace in our families, in our country and in the world. Lord Jesus, you said, Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of justice, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Make us willing to suffer for the sake of right rather than to practice injustice. And do not let us discriminate against our neighbours and oppress and persecute them. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, let us join together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Our last hymn is an old favourite. We've jazzed up a little bit for you because as you go out into the world, we know that you are going out marching in the confidence of God and marching in the light of God, and we're going out marching with the saints of God. So do sing along in your living rooms, kitchens, or wherever you are, and march around the room as well, as much as you can. Enjoy. <laughs> Watch. 
are marching in the light of dawn. We are marching, we are marching on. We are marching in the light of dawn. We are marching, we are marching on. We are marching in the light of dawn. We are living in the love of God. We are moving in the power 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 of God. We are moving. We are moving on. We are moving in the power of God. We are moving. We are moving on. We are moving in the power of God. Hamburger can ye quen cause see a 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 hamburger see a hamburger see a hamburger can ye quen cause see a hamburger see a hamburger see a hamburger can ye quen cause. go from our worship today to a week of uncertainty and confusion. We pray God's blessing on each one of us. Let us pray. God's people have celebrated all that God has done, from creation to the cross, to the saints who have lived among us. Now we go from this place to the workplace, the home place, the marketplace, every place living as God's own people. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>